Are you ready? Stand by. Hundreds of thousands of Canadians are involved in shooting sports. We travel the country to bring you the events and the people that make this incredible community unlike any other. Welcome to the CCFR's Canada Downrange. I'm Rod Giltaka. I'm currently the CEO and Executive Director of the Canadian Coalition for Firearm Rights. My name is Tracy Wilson and I'm Vice President of Public Relations for the Canadian Coalition for Firearm Rights. My name is Michael Loberg. I'm the General Counsel to the Canadian Coalition for Firearm Rights. My name is Jamie Elliott. I'm currently the President of the Canadian Coalition for Firearm Rights. A group of people thought that there was something missing in the advocacy realm with respect to firearm rights in Canada. There were discussions that uh, were taken by these people and after a while we decided we would form an organization to advance this. The CCFR was sort of born out of a, a need, you know, we were all members of other organizations, a lot of us still are, and we just saw this void in advocacy and, you know, we, we thought we need to stop preaching to the choir. We've sort of got to get our message out there to the general public. What was being portrayed in the media did not match my reality as a gun owner. If you've been around this long enough, you start to understand that, you know, people get comfortable, people get settled into the same positions, and the same things keep happening over and over again. And it doesn't become fresh, it becomes very stale. We've got to be a little more effective on a bigger scope, speaking to more Canadians, being more effective with legislators and just changing the conversation around firearms in Canada. I guess the prevailing opinion was we tried it this way for 20 years and we haven't gotten the respect or the progress that we think we deserve. Uh, so that there was an appetite to do something a little bit differently and I was recruited by someone to step up to be the president, the first president of the CCFR. I, I got uh, heavily involved with the CCFR right off the bat. The ideas generated over time through the contributions of the founders and after a while it evolved into uh, the public relations organization that you see today. So for people that may not know what the CCFR does, um, we are a very different organization. Very different than any organization that advocated on behalf of firearm owners before and in that our programming reaches out to people that don't own guns. For the average Canadian that doesn't know anything about the topic, but only gets information from the mainstream media. And that's, that's very difficult because they have, they have a very broad reach and they have a very loud voice. And it's hard to, to talk over that. We're not gangsters, we're not murderers, we're not killers. We are the most highly vetted, most trustworthy members of society. And a lot of people get confused about that. When you see a news story about guns and a gun has been used for a crime, you immediately, they would, think guns are a problem. And the answer is the crime is the problem and the criminal is the problem. We are not the problem. We are not the ones doing those things. And the fact that that message has gotten mixed in all media uh, in Canada and the people of Canada just simply aren't getting the message that there's two groups of people here and if you conflate one with the other, you're gonna to come to the wrong political decision and the wrong allocation of resources in trying to solve the fundamental problem of crime and gangs. Across the media and across the public, there's, there's a real lack of honesty in the conversation. And I think that's purposeful. Uh, I don't think they want to have an honest conversation because if everybody had, was able to sit down, have a rational discussion about the topics at hand, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't be in this fight. We seek truth. We seek to disseminate truth. We are perfectly happy to identify problems that exist and we are perfectly happy to seek solutions for those problems that work for everyday Canadians, non-firearm owning Canadians as well as firearm owning Canadians. We bring rationality to the argument and that is something that is not always present in the firearm advocacy realm. We try to continue to represent the CCFRs as it was intended, which is to bring factual debate and civilized debate. You know, I think we do a really good job of that about 97.5% of the time. 
Uh, but yeah, sometimes we get dragged into the, into the fight as well. One of the things that's very special about the CCFR is that the people who come into it come in with a dedication to professionalism and advancing the firearm rights argument with a very high level of debate. For me, it's really important to get out into the community. I travel all across this country. I'm from the East Coast to the West Coast, everywhere in between. We're doing pub nights, we're networking with our people, we're hosting ladies' days, youth days, charity shoots. But we do things that we can do on a grassroots level, like fully animated explainer videos. We have a television show, that's never ever happened before. A television show where Canadians are shooting handguns and black rifles. It's a really important element for us to get down into the communities to show these people firsthand with education, with a day at the range, even just a conversation so that they can hear some truth and get another perspective other than just a biased media opinion. There's really no compelling evidence that anyone can point to that the system that we have has resulted in increased public safety. We need to really look at our regulations, make sure that anything that we do has a demonstrable benefit to public safety. And if it doesn't, then we should call those regulations what they are, which is they're just punitive um, against, uh, against a culture that many people in Canada just don't understand. The CCFR's Canada Downrange is brought to you by The Shooting Edge, SFRC, Select Shooting Supplies, the Calgary Shooting Center, Target Sports Canada, and Canuck and Bagheera. For me, the CCFR's greatest accomplishment so far is the impact that we've had on legislation and the ability to take the voice of the average gun owner into the House of Commons and into the Senate in a new, fresh way. I can't think of anyone that has invested so much emotionally and, and just her work ethic and the amount of effort uh, that she puts into her advocacy. I think calling Tracy Wilson a firecracker is actually an understatement. <laughs> like, you're, you're talking about uh, a big pile of dynamite. Tracy has a lot of passion. If there's something going on on Parliament Hill, she's there. She throws her stuff together, charges her phone, she's there. She's, she's live streaming it on Facebook. She, she, she will do absolutely anything to protect our community and that we're not given a, a raw deal, whether it's the, the, the media or politicians or individuals or people on social media. She really is the, uh, the mother bear that looks after uh, every, all of us at the CCFR and, and gun owners in general. I'm a mom and a grandma. You know, I want to say for Canada too. And I, I'm very passionate about what I do because it matters to me. It matters to my children. It matters to my grandson. And I think people sort of get this image of you, you know, they see you doing videos or they see you on camera and they think one thing and when they meet me they realize I'm just like everybody else. So is Rod. We're all just average people with a really extraordinary sport and team. We're all very, very passionate people when it comes right down to it. We want, we want the best for our community. They put in 365 days a year, 24-7, you know, when they're asleep. They're working, they're thinking, they're on all the time. Uh, Rod is doing his videos, um, doing his advocacy. He is constantly working. You can't pay somebody money to buy that kind of dedication to what he's doing for the CCFR. I've learned a lot from myself just on how to get a lot of stuff done uh, in, in the tightest amount of time possible. Uh, the guy, he seems almost superhuman at times with the amount of, uh, amount of stuff that he actually does. He's a critical thinker. You can sit down, you can have a discussion with him. If, if I don't agree with him, I can say very easily that I don't think this is the right way to go. We should probably talk this out and figure it out. And we can work through that and, and come to uh, a happy medium where we can take that messaging forward at that point. We, when you join us together, we sort of become this dynamic duo where we play off of each other's talents and each other's skills and characteristics. And um, yeah, it's been absolutely amazing for me having a mentor like Rod. Um, I, I have a very difficult time with anyone who acts like a bully. I have a difficult time for anyone who lies about other people. And in my case, my, my main concern is lying about gun owners. Membership dollars are extremely important to us. We, we have to be extremely respectful 
of where that money comes from. Uh, any organization that is, is working with money from our members or from their members, you have to understand that this is, this is money that people have worked hard for. Um, they're donating to you because they believe in what we are doing as an organization. The field officers are a critical element of the CCFR insofar as everything that the CCFR can design as far as policies that we may wish to implement require people to actually go out and implement them. We've enjoyed a great deal of success with collecting wonderful people to donate their time as field officers. There's I think over 240 of them and these are volunteers. They go to gun shows and, and they do logistical work uh, all the way down to you know spreading our links on social media and engaging in and civilized debate. They are our face, our voices in the public community. We have principal spokespeople with Tracy Wilson and Rod Giltaka, but on a day-to-day -day basis we've got an army of field officers out there talking to everybody all the time and without them none of this would be possible. The unsung heroes are our volunteers and, uh, and our employees as well. I, th I think we're gaining ground in, in recognition and the education of the general public because people are starting to ask more questions and they're starting to hold the politicians to account. It's sort of that if you build it they will come moment where you've got this this dream and this vision of what you want to see happen and you know along with the work and effort of your associates it comes true. It's really um, elevated the conversation in Canada around firearms and elevated the participation. The CCFR came out of the gates really quickly. I think, I think our message and our vision for advocacy and just basically the things that we're going to do that we're going to be different than what anybody else had done really played a part in that and it's, and it's been growing almost unmanageably ever since. Here we are driving around in a fully wrapped 30-foot RV to, to let Canadians know that we're here and, uh, and what's going on just isn't right. Gun owners are really happy that we're doing what we're doing. <laughs> Give her Trace. <laughs> oh, we finally found some integrity. We're having a little meet and greet with gun owners from all around the area here in Niagara region at NAS Guns and Ammo. So we've been super well received, we came in, parking lots full of people, we've got a barbecue going, it's just a ton of fun and it's nice to get some of the, the support in person, uh, a great change up from what we've been usually doing all day to get together with some other fellow gun owners and just talk about uh, the state of our country. We've got people from all over the place, some 10 minutes away, some several hours away, uh, just showing their support and showing that uh, what we're doing, what Rod and Tracy and Colin are doing is what needs to be done. It shows how united our community is, and to me, that's exactly what stops like this mean. We're just regular people. Uh, I didn't know whether people would like this idea or whether they think it, it was valuable, but uh, it seems like people are pretty united around the idea that uh, we need to show uh, the Liberals and, and maybe our political adversaries that we're just, we're real people, we're not going away. We're not intimidated by what they're doing and uh, we're just not going to be quiet about it. We've got this leadership team at the CCFR that, I mean, makes incredible personal sacrifices. The harassment they, they receive, um, you know, time away from family, time away from loved ones. And, you know, it's, they're out there busting their humps every day for you, me, and every legal firearm owner that's out there that knows that what's being proposed right now by the Liberal Party is, is not the way to tackle the problems that we all want to see solved. Most Canadians don't seem to know a lot about firearms, other than what they hear in the media, obviously. So I think that uh, it's great to have people who are advocating on behalf of the you know, hundreds and thousands of Canadians who own firearms, shoot them safely every day, keep them stored safely every day, who pose zero risk at all to the Canadian public. There's certainly been an awful lot of rhetoric being out there and certainly trying to paint uh, shooters, target shooters, hunters um, with one of those broad spectrums that make us look a little bit off or a little bit right wing, and we're not. And what I like about the CCFR is they're bringing a very logical, conscious, quiet, 
data-filled voice to a bunch of us shooters. It's, it's wrong. They're, they're targeting the complete wrong area. It should be street crime, border, not the legal gun owner that goes to the range, that pays good money for his firearm, and just wants to go out and shoot and have fun. Well, we have an obligation to represent firearm owners and, and, well, specifically our members. The Liberals have gone all in on gun control and what that means to us. It maybe means something a little bit different to them, but what that means to us is we are going to lose our property as a result of criminals shooting each other in downtown Toronto. It's not fair, it's not right. Um, so we've tried everything. We've tried to access the media. The media won't, they won't report on us. We don't exist to the media. I mean, it's really important that Canadians be made aware of the nuances of this sort of legislation that, that the Liberals are proposing. The fact is that as a firearms owner, I want a safe Canada for my family to live and enjoy. These kinds of laws do nothing to promote that. This law is not going to stop a gangbanger in Toronto from carrying or using an illegal firearm that they shouldn't have had in the first place. It's not going to do anything to keep a firearm from coming into Canada illegally. At the end of the day, the truth is, it's all about politics. And that's a really dangerous thing in our society because when you when you use politics, you know, when you're just trying to hold on to power and you're willing to kick the doors in of, of millions of Canadians just so that you can stay in power or turn fellow Canadians against their brothers and sisters, I mean, this is, this is insanity. The best hope we have for not getting any more restrictions put on us and some actual work done on the issues that we want to see is a Conservative majority. Anything less than that, and uh, we're in some serious trouble, not only on the firearms file, but on crime in general. This is not the answer to curing their crime problem, and no, my guns are not for sale. The CCFR's Canada Downrange is brought to you by The Shooting Edge, SFRC, Select Shooting Supplies, The Calgary Shooting Centre, Target Sports Canada, and Canuck and Bagheera. Hey guys, it's Rod with another pro tip. So this is another interesting one. I'm trying to make them all interesting, right? How do you differentiate between a gun safe and a gun cabinet? So the question kind of pops up in the firearm safety course from time to time. They're like, well, you know, what's the difference, right? Um, you know, what do I have? And basically my understanding, and it's, it's all, it's very subjective. It's based on, on interpretation. My understanding is a gun safe typically has a combination lock on it, whether it's a push button or a spin or what have you and is of pretty sturdy construction. And a gun cabinet typically is, it's very tin, it's almost like a high school locker kind of thing, and it's typically keyed, okay? So my interpretation may not be the interpretation that the firearms program has, okay? So note that, it's your responsibility to ask the question of them if you're concerned. And the other thing is, some firearms officers at the firearms program may have a different opinion than others. That's true, that actually happens. Uh, we're like, ah, oh, that's not a gun safe, that's a cabinet. My understanding is they both qualify as a safe. Now, what's the difference between the two practically? So practically, when it comes to the law as far as safe storage is concerned, they're both the same. They both qualify as a safe. What does that mean to you? It means you can have restricted firearms in the safe without a secure locking device on it and ammunition inside the safe too with the firearm. So if you're doing that, you're probably thinking, well, one of the reasons why I'm gonna have a gun safe or a gun cabinet is because I want fast access to my firearms for whatever reason. Maybe you live in a rural setting and you have a cougar problem or a bear problem. You're like, I wanna be able to just, you know, punch four numbers in, open my safe, get my whatever, uh, shotgun, what have you, slap a magazine in there and shoot the bear that's trying to get into my house or, or mauling my neighbor. Um, if that's the case, then you probably wanna go with a gun safe. I think the only reason why you have people uh, having gun cabinets is because they're far less expensive because they're not as sturdy and they don't have combination locks on them. Personally, and I don't wanna be somebody to tell you how to spend your money, but personally, I would just go with a gun safe. So I wanna alert you to another kind of safe. And if you go to the warehouse stores, uh, or department store. Sometimes they sell these little safes like this, about this big, and they're fireproof. They have a, a you know combination lock on them and stuff like that. The law does not specifically say how big or how small a safe has to be to qualify for a safe. So let's say you wanted to store a handgun for whatever reason. You want it to be absolutely secure from theft, which is why you always go with a gun safe. And that, again, that's just my opinion. 
not telling anybody how to spend their money, but I don't want criminals getting my handguns and shooting other people with them. It's bad for our community, it's bad for me, you know, it's bad for whoever's being shot. So we wanna make sure our firearms are always locked up as securely as we can, as practically can be done. So if I want to have a handgun, it's a restricted firearm, Normally, if I don't have a safe, I have a securely locked container, which is one way you can legally store a restricted firearm. The firearm ha would have to be unloaded, secure locking device, so a cable or a trigger lock, in a locked box. Well, if I don't want to do that, I can actually get one of these small safes, which allows me to put a restricted firearm in there, no secure locking device required on the firearm, lay it in there, loaded magazine in there is okay too. Ammunition in the safe is okay too. No secure locking device required on the firearm, so it makes it easy to get easy to transport if I'm transferring into something else. And again, the number one thing, it's very securely stored in my home. Okay, so when it comes to safes, there's a lot of different configurations. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the gun cabinet. And for the extra, I don't know, you can get a, a, a like an actual stand-up gun safe, 16 gun safe for, I don't know, $400 out there. Less than the price of a gun. And now you've got something to keep handguns in, AR-15s plus all of your non-restricteds and ammunition and you can bolt that thing to the wall so you can't even tip that safe off. I mean, you can if they get a chainsaw, right? But you're making it as difficult as possible. So great secure storage and fast access to your firearms should you need them for whatever purpose. So hopefully that helps um, differentiate between the two, the gun safe versus the gun cabinet. Well, I hope that was helpful. Thanks, take care, and we'll see you soon. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.